Yo, yo, it's K1K13, and this is, wow, you know what, because I start off the video with, yo, this, hey, YouTube, it's K1K13, I can see why people saying, like, oh, it kind of sounds like your videos, I'm just like, damn, it kind of does, but anyways, <laughs> this is K1K13, and today, we will be doing the podcast number six, and, um, no, I said, um, god damn. I'm trying not to say um that much. I'm trying to keep that conversation to myself. Wow, that sounds really weird. I'm trying to keep that conversation flowing good. No really good breaks in between here and there. Um, damn, I did it again. Uh, there you go. There we do it again. So I just wanted to start off the video with... Uh, I got a package today. Uh, I wasn't really going to start with that, but I got a package today. And it's Bakugo. And Frieza, finally. I was supposed to get them last week, but Japan was in Golden Week, which they celebrate. Actually, I never really researched it. Let me check real quick. Why is Golden Week celebrated? Many Japanese workers get about a week off around the end of April and beginning of May. It is now celebrated as a Shawa Day, a day to allow people to think back on hardship and recovery of the Shawa period and to ponder the future of Japan. Wow! Wow! badass i never knew that that is crazy why doesn't america have this shit oh i don't think they have holidays don't quote me on this i don't think they have holidays over there like us have memorial day labor day martin luther king day etc so over there they just get it all in one week it just I don't know if I like that better. I guess I'd have to check. Like, I'd have to try it myself to be like, all right. But I think I would rather have... Well, to be honest, the work ethic or work scenarios in Japan compared to the United States is probably completely different. I'm pretty sure in Japan, they don't even have, like... Let me see. Do they have factories in Japan? Shipbuilding, robotics, and electronics are all notable manufacturing industries in Japan. While manufacturing has declined as a proportion of Japanese J GDP over the past couple of decades, Japan still has a very large manufacturing base. But how is the work? How is the work like environment over there? Because the ship, because the, the the shipping or the, the factories and warehouses over here are kind of just like a little bit of slavery, a little bit of slavery. Like it's like it kind of feels like slavery sometimes. I mean, they still are paying you, but really, are they even paying you? They're really just giving you money to pay for your fucking rent. Another check to pay for your little, um, you know, nobody wants to work at a warehouse and a factory and not spend the money because, you know, we're not rich. So you, you want to use the money to have some fun and then boom, that next check's gone. So where's your extra amount of money you have to like actually go save it up or use it i feel like most people don't save which is fine i mean who knows you could possibly die tomorrow and you have i mean it would be nice to have that money though because funerals in general do cost a lot of money so it kind of sucks wow i honestly was wanting this podcast be like fuck i'm not gonna talk about shit but I, i'm actually but uh It, it, it'd be nice to have a couple of monies saved up in case you do die and you don't put that burden of having people having to pay for your like funeral that way it kind of sucks ass you're literally paying for your own fucking funeral <laughs> how bad does that sound it literally costs money to die <laughs> oh jesus why does it cost money to die bro All right, cost of dying in all 50 states. Oh, my God, it's ridiculous. Mississippi is number 50, and average, average funeral expenses is 6.5,000. I'm trying to skip to number one. I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm just going to go here. Number one, boom, boom, boom. drum roll. Hawaii. And Avril kind of makes sense. Average funeral expenses in, in Hawaii is 
15000 <laughs> Imagine paying $15,000 to die. Boy, you better just throw me into the fucking water, bro. Fuck it. Let me be part of the sea, my boy. Fuck all that. Um, But yeah, that's number one. California second. What the fuck? Hold on. California second with average average funeral expenses. How do you? This is so fucked up. I'm talking about funeral, bro. I'm not even gonna put this in the title. People are gonna be like, "What the fuck? This nigga's talking about." Sorry, this dude's talking about um dying in the fucking podcast. Who wants to listen to this shit? Wow. Well, somebody has to somebody has to tell you about the bees, the bees and the birds. Jeez, sorry. Uh, I don't even know like what that talk is because I didn't get it. The talk, the talk of the bees, birds and bees. That actually makes no sense. I'm glad I didn't get that fucking talk. What is the story about the birds and the bees? The phrase the birds and the bees is a metaphor for explaining mechanics of reproduction to your younger child, relying on imagery of bees pollinating eggs hatching to substitute for a more technical explanation of sense. Hmm. See, I'm going to talk shit about it. But I'm probably in my back of my mind. I'm probably just mad because I didn't get the fucking talk. Because, you know, Latino moms, parents, a lot of them just like, they think in their minds like, all right, you just got to raise this kid, you know. You don't have to give him. Well, I don't know. I'm just basing this off my perspective or or what I witnessed, but I don't believe in it. But the phrase, the birds and the bees, it, like, I think it's stupid the way they explained it. Uh, Jesus, I went from funeral, I went from dying to talking, huh? To talking about birds. Well, anyways, I didn't get to talk of the birds and the birds and the beads, which you know, because I grew up. Um, I, my mom really wasn't the smartest of the bunch, but I mean, she tried, right? That's all that matters. <laughs> you know, if your kid ends up in prison or dead at a young age, no oh, fuck. Uh, change the topic here but uh, yeah I never really got the, the birds and the bees talk but I'm going back to the golden week oh jeez I really derived from my fucking uh really went off course there um many Japanese workers get about a week around end of April so in general I don't know if I'd rather have just one week off but like I said like working in Japan is probably completely different from working in the United States, just because it's a lower population, they don't have like many immigrants like us, or just a lot of people from different countries. So it's easier probably just to stay in your bubble. Japan, work, place, work culture versus American. So, like, while Americans generally have to be self motivated, Japanese employees embrace a group mentality and look to their superiors for approval, making big decisions. However, both cultures work extremely long hours and take little vacation time. See, this is some bullshit. I don't understand. I don't understand why we succumbed or we um, conformed to United States. Or I don't even know if it was United States. But why do we have... Sorry about the snow sniffing. Um, why did we succumb or conform to five days a week? Why? Can someone tell me that? Let me see. Why did we conform to five days of work? Um, I can't find anything. Why five days work week? Because look, think about it, man. You work five days a week, 40 hours, right? Just 12 hours of a day. Jesus, we're going to do the math here. We work 12 hours a day, right? No, no, we work eight. There's 40. There's You have to work eight-hour shifts, right? Most of the time, it's eight-hour shifts. Okay, suppose you work a 7 to 3, right? 7 a.m. This is for all my teenagers who are watching this, and you, you want to work a full-time job, and this might help you or it might not help you. It might change your perspective. might not. Okay, so there's 24 hours in a day, right? You work at 7 a.m. More than likely, you have to wake up at 5.30, hour and a half. Depends how far you are in terms of 
working, right? So 5.30, take a shower, brush your teeth, eat a little bit of breakfast, maybe do some stretching, say bye to your mom, your dad, you know, anybody that lives with you. Then you leave to work at 7.30, right? So that's hour and a half already. Hour and a half. And then you have to go to work for nine and eight and a half hours, right? Eight and a half hours. Because because 30 minutes are your lunch. And then you have eight hours of pure work. Most of the time. Most of the time. That's how most of the, well, that's the jobs I've worked most of the time. It's been like that. So eight and a half hours. You go to work for eight and a half hours. You you go to lunch for eight for a half hour. You, you go to work four hours, lunch, four hours, go home. Right? I think seven to three is wrong though. I think it's supposed to be seven to four. Yeah, seven to four. Let me see. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four. That's nine hours. Oh, that's too much then. So seven to three thirty then. Okay, seven to three thirty. Seven to three thirty, right? So then you go to work. Five thirty. You wake up at five thirty, and then you're at work for eight and a half hours, right? So boom, it's already three thirty. Depending on how far you live from here, well, let, let's just say average thirty minutes, right, to get home. You get home at four o'clock. You need to get at least eight hours of sleep, right? So let's see, five thirty. You have to wake up at five thirty, so. Let's see, backtrack, backtrack. Eight. You have to go to sleep by 8 p.m. to get eight and a half hours of sleep. Eight hours of sleep, right? No, no. 8.30. So, right. 8.30. No. 9.30. 10 30, 11 30, 1 30, 2 30, 3 30, 4 30, 5 30. That's eight hours, right? So, you have to be in bed by. <clears throat> to get eight hours, right? Let's just say that's the minimum. Eight hours. You have to be in bed by 8.30. So you get home at four. You literally have four hours to do your own things, right? Four to eight thirty. Boom. So wake up at five thirty. So you have roughly three hours of the day. Three hours of the day to do what you want. Then you work Monday through Friday. Working, right? Let's just say the basic Monday through Friday. You work those hours three times five. 15 hours, you know, five days is um, um 15 hours. So you get 15 hours of free time throughout the week of just to yourself. That's if you don't have kids, if you don't have family to worry about. And those three hours are just solely, solely to you. I'm saying three hours because you need at least 30 minutes of stuff to do before you go to bed. You know, you just can't go straight to bed, man. You got to brush your teeth, maybe do some stretching. Just like Yoshihagi said, Yoshi Kakakira said, like you need to, he needs that stuff. I feel like that's a good thing if you stretch before going to sleep because, you know, your body's tired. So you go to bed. You can't just go to bed all like your body's all tensed up from working all day, thinking all day. You have to let your, um, <clears throat> that's why a lot of the time before you go to sleep you think a lot because you know you're just thinking about the day you're, you're pretty much like a recollection of all the shit you just went through in a day maybe you, you backtrack and you go a couple days back and start thinking about that and then that boom you finally fall asleep right so your brain is like pretty much excreting i don't think excreting is a good word um letting out all that memory in your mind right you're like <sighs> flooding it out and that's still counts towards like meditation i guess kind of but i feel like before you go to sleep you should stretch and then i guess meditate but really they say or from what i've heard and what i've read meditating is like just controlling your breathing so if you can you know you know when you fall asleep you pretty much if you're a mouth breather you kind of have to like breathe with your nose when you go to sleep because you you can't like breathe with your mouth while you're sleeping right so, like, you go to bed, right? This is without stretching. So, you go to bed. Your body's tensed up. Your bo- your mind is still flooded with all these things. It's still going. You're tired emotionally, physically. Your body, your body physically is tired, right? But your mind is still going. But to excrete that and slow it down, you start thinking about other shit. And 
those thoughts start flooding out little by little. And then finally your mind's like, oh, okay, so we're in this state of mind. So we got to get some sleep. So, but if you don't like do like meditation shit, a lot of that, let's just compare it to like a laptop, right? You have that RAM, right? And you have to close these apps to get back to sleep. So if you close all these apps in your mind, you have more RAM. But if you go to sleep with these memories and apps still open, you wake up in the morning with nothing, you know, you, you still have those that same apps open and running. So your mind didn't really process the sleep enough. So you start, you, you don't start the day off, right? Especially if you're on your phone at night and you're still making your brain work. It's really bad for your sleep. Look at me thinking I'm fucking, you know, I'm just, a lot of this stuff like I'm talking about is not researched down to the nail, but I've done a little bit of like um, research, maybe just the, like the crust, you know, because me like personally, research is like a world, you know, you do the crust. Let me see real quick. Earth layers. So, like, when you do research, you either do the crust, you do the mantle, you do the outer core, or the inner core. The inner core, that's, like, the you're in there. Your ball's deep. Um, but I think most of my stuff I research is, is probably crust, maybe mantle. Mantle would mean, like, that. Like I did read about it. I go into articles. I didn't write down notes. I feel like outer core is, like, writing down notes. Inner core, that's like you're getting, re- you're getting, you you know, someone, and you know, you guys are just passing around information. That's when you know you're, you know your shit. You know your shit down to the core. Boom, science, bitch. Um, but yeah, fuck the five day work week, man. It's terrible. It's, I don't know why we conform to that. We supposedly, I so Google. I mean, it's not really um. The best is of, I mean, Wikipedia, it's linking as Wikipedia as its source, but here it is. Who invented the five-day work week? In 1908, the first five-day work week in the United States was instituted by a New England cotton mill so that Jewish workers would not have to work on Sabbath from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. In 1926, Henry Ford began shutting down his automotive factories for all Saturday and Sunday. See, there you go. There you go. So Henry Ford pretty much set the bar for the, like, why do we need people here Saturday and Sunday? But in my opinion, we should work half and half and we can't even half, half and half because it's fucking seven days. So you have to work. It should be four days work, eight hours a day and get paid the same as five days and work and have three days off. Cause then if you only have two days off, you have the Saturday to enjoy your shit. Sunday, you're still moping about going to work the next fucking day. It's fucking bullshit. And we should. This is the real fights we should be fighting instead of this weed, LGBT, um, war on drugs. I feel like war on drugs is a different topic. It's really serious. Um, maybe I'll go into it another time. But I feel like this this is the real shit we should be fighting. Right here, five days a week. It's horse shit. It's the most fucked up shit that we've ever thought of how how we have seven days a week work five days and two days off come on who invented this shit man this is bullshit at least with three days of work you would have one day to enjoy your shit a second day to finish the shit to finish the shit third day no your second day your first day would be relaxed you know bullshit oh i want to just fucking bullshit today i'm gonna lay up down fucking watch a marathon all fucking day eat some fucking popcorn have some um, Lipton tea, some fucking water, maybe some Billy's with the frenzies. Fucking it skits, man. And then the next day, that's when you get your shit done. Sunday, you can relax a little bit, but still be on your bullshit. Oh, dude. I have it all fucking worked out, man. Three days a week. Days off? Dude, fucking cake, man. Fucking cake. Now, how would we go about this? You know, you can bitch all you want, but nothing's going to change if no one implements a solution and i don't have a solution at the moment but i will be working towards it and once this happens i'm gonna go hard on this bitch man i'm tired of these five days a week it's horseshit 
It's like the company wants you to do that shit. They still pay you. Why can't they just pay us for the four days, the extra day? Well, it's not going to kill them. They're still going to make a fat-ass profit because people are still buying from fucking them. Oh, man. And then there's another question here. Is it better to work four or five days a week? Longer hours and work-related stress. In reality, most employees on a four-day week will most likely be expected to work the same 40-hour weeks, but in four days instead of five. Longer days could have significant effect on your employee stress levels and therefore overall well-being and productivity. So I'm guessing they're saying, like, if you work four days a week, you still have to do the fucking 40 hours. This is bullshit, man. We conform to these 40 hours. I don't understand why. Like, this is bogus. Like, it's the, it's the basics. Like, the companies know, like, all right, it all, I don't know if it's all around the world, but in the United States, 40 hours is the typical shit. So I'm looking here in Afghanistan, Albania. It's like we all just agreed to it. Like, all right, yeah, 40 hours a week sounds pretty good. How many hours are in a week? How many hours? Probably could have just. How many hours a week? 168. Minus 40. 128. Minus sleep, eight times seven. Eight times seven, 56. 128. Minus 56. Two, 72. Some bullshit. It's horseshit. This is I can't believe we agreed to this type of shit, man. I can't believe it. We have seven days a week and five days we have to work that shit. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Maybe I'm just a lazy fuck. Maybe. Probably. Okay, so there's another article. It says, Will history repeat itself? Are we on the path to a shorter work week? Will history repeat itself, or are we on the path to a shorter week? Let me skim through this real quick. The average one. Oh, the average work week in the U.S. is about 34 hours. And then these warehouses and factories have this bullshit fucking thing called mandatory overtime. So let me explain to the people who've never worked in a warehouse and factory. So mandatory overtime is them pretty much saying you have to come to work on Saturday. So you have one day off. And if you don't come in, I'm going to write that as a tick, as a point. So if you keep calling off these Saturdays, I will eventually fire you. How you feel about that? How you feel about that? And if you don't... Oh, oh, let me get me started on this bullshit. So these companies, they give you bullshit vacation hours. I don't even care. Actually, yeah, I do care. Well, I don't get, like, these companies don't even want to give you vacation days, dude. They don't want, and then a lot of the time, people who get um paid vacation are just the people who work at the warehouse and factory. But from these days now, most of the workers aren't even um, hired through the company. They're through an agency, and those agencies don't—they don't do paid vacations, or maybe they do, but most don't. <sighs> Some fucking bullshit, dude. I'm telling you, man. These guys, these companies—they—they—they they, they think we're just rats, man. And eventually, I don't—I've discussed this a couple times with my friend um, Peach Boy. That um, in the future, with robots coming in, they're going to start taking people's jobs. Which, and then I say that it's fucked up that they're going to take our jobs. But he said that, or his argument is that it's fine that they take our jobs. That way, oh shit, this shit's crazy. Okay, so it's fine that if they take our jobs, because then we will be at home and we will be get a... People are, well, there's theories out there that say universal basic income. Which is 
a radical policy proposal of monthly cash grant given to all members of the community without mean tests, regardless of personal desert, with no strings attached, and under most proposals at a sufficiently high level to enable life free from economic insecurity. Practically saying, you will get a monthly income. And he was saying, my friend's argument saying, you will get that universal income. While you get that income, you can explore your own creativity, which I, and I'm saying like, okay, that's fine. But people are going to take advantage of this, especially people who are, I don't want to say lazy. I guess they are lazy. I mean, who who wouldn't want to just get income every fucking month and not do shit? I mean, but I feel like a lot of those people are just going to go down in life. Because for the most part, the people who are lazy, they get the link card. For the people who don't know, link cards are for food. And people buy with these foods or they don't get that much money sometimes. Depends how much kids you have. Depends how much income the, um, the family gets from working. And with um, the link card, they usually spend it on frozen foods, which have no nutrition, or they if they do, it's very minimum, high in sodium. It's it, I don't I don't know what's the point anymore in terms of the link card because I understand if you have a big family, and it it's pretty uh it's pretty messed up. I understand that uh, life throws lemons at you. You know, you got to make lemonade. But this uh, pregnancy shit, I mean, come on, man. You got you to throw a condom on. I think four or five kids, six kids is too much nowadays. It's just too expensive. And you're feeding these kids like poison, especially that frozen shit, man. Well, a majority of the time. Frozen foods are extremely bad for your health. And if you eat that every day and you don't shit it out, a lot of that stuff stays in your stomach and pretty much just rots in there, you know, the poop. And if you don't poop it out, it's even worse. Uh, Sorry, like my podcast is really not, I really don't want it about beef figures. Maybe one or two I, I will be about figgies. But I really just want to say some of my perspectives on shit. I understand if you don't agree with it, or I understand if it, uh, I wasn't going to even do it tonight. I was just going to write down some uh, just some ideas for the podcast, but geez, I really went in this bitch. But uh, I do think that in the future, <coughs> people will stop having kids. Um, this is far, far in the future, though. Oh, I don't know how far, far I'm talking about. I think by 2030, maybe 2025, 2030, people will ultimately stop having so many kids. We will be going down and imagine when immortality comes or I don't even know what because immortality is pretty much like a broad statement because um, immortality means or in my opinion means like keeping your body, your soul your brain all intact and living throughout, you know, you never die. You stay at one age, but what I'm, I think what will, will happen in the future with for immortality or a lot of these rich people who, who want to live forever and don't want to um, leave planet earth um, will do. It's kind of like, so your brain is practically, oh man, this sounds so fucking weird to say, but your brain is practically like a memory card, right? And I've read some theories that you will be uh, moving your brain. This is some crazy ass technology, futuristic, dystopian type shit. But you can move your brain from one body to another. Therefore, your mentality your uh it wouldn't be your spirit anymore your spirit's practically gone because i feel like that's not your mind isn't a spirit i feel like your heart might be spirit as corny as that sounds but um 
you will be moving your brain to another body, therefore becoming immortality. And if they can make that to a point where poor people could afford it or lower income, that's when um, people will stop producing, reproducing. And that's when... This is just all theory, though. This is this has literally no backup. I this is pretty much me just bullshitting, but this could happen. Um, it would be a good uh, Black Mirror episode. <laughs> I actually haven't seen any of those in a while. Let me take a swig. Um, when eventually when people, when the United States takes away the, the tax deduction from people, um, working and they get a, a fat income back, eventually when the government takes that away, or if they ever take it away, I think they will eventually. That's when people will stop having kids too. Cause I know, I know a couple of ladies in my uh, town. I don't know them, but I've heard them speak about it. They're like, oh, I want to have another kid because the income tax return is it's immense. So it's worth it in the end, which is fine. I mean, <coughs> uh, me personally, I've experienced it. Uh, I don't want to talk about how much I, might, I got back, but it was a good hefty, like above 5K. And so people who have like four or five kids and that adult or his parent works all year, 12 months whatever she made on yearly and they will give her back the income tax and she'll make easily like 16,000 in one month from the income tax. And I mean, I can't blame them. I mean, 16,000 in one month, that's amazing. But uh, uh, this is the problem with low income people. They tend to spend it all on vacation, which is okay. Cause you can make money, but experiences are forever, you know? Uh, they'll spend it immediately to buy a new car. It's a it's a it's a good and bad situation. If you're, because if that's your only money and you have no money in the bank account, then you're pretty much fucked. And you spend all that income tax, and then you leave nothing in your bank. It's just it's pretty practically useless. But who knows though? Like, what's the point of saving if tomorrow you could possibly, you know? not be here anymore that's pretty much what or i think lower income people think about you know they're like oh i'm just gonna spend that shot right now because what if i save up all this money and i just die one day i don't have nothing i never use that money i mean that's fine some people will look at it like oh i saved all this money that way i can just pass it down generations it's okay uh but <coughs> i don't think universal basic income will happen and i don't think it would be universal it would just be like united states russia europe maybe mexico sorry uh canada um universal basic income sounds pretty cool though i would still work if i have if they gave me a thousand dollars every month i would still work i would go to work because then i could just I would just use out that universal a thousand dollars that or how would even call just say national basic income. I would like put that thousand dollars. I would just put it to my uh, bank account, and I could just see that I could just set that aside in case I ever need it for like my car breaking down, new tires. Uh, I gotta go to the hospital. See, and then that's where else like Medicaid and. Uh, yeah, health insurance comes in. Oh, it's so fucked. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. But that's the end of the podcast. I, I didn't really end it in a good note, or I didn't end it in a good conclusion. That's just because I didn't really want it to be that long. <clears throat> I'm really tired from work. Um, thanks for watching or thanks for listening. Uh, I will eventually try to get this on Spotify because I know YouTube. You don't want to be running that in the background while listening because you want to do other shit while you're you know listening to shit. So. 
or some people might be driving and listening to it, but I understand because YouTube drains your battery. But I'm trying to get it on Spotify. I know people don't want to use Patreon because the player, or I don't know, for iPhone, for Android, I have an Android. And it's not too bad using like the actual app, app for Patreon and listening to the sound on there. It's not too bad. But I understand if you want to listen on Spotify. I'm going to try to look into them, put it on Spotify, maybe put it on another music app. <clears throat> that way it's easier for you to listen to it while you're driving on Facebook, on uh, anywhere else. Okay, thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys in my next videos, which is probably Bakugo next week, Bakugo and Silver Chariot, and then maybe I'll upload three videos next week, but don't count on it, because I'd be super duper busy with fucking five-day work week. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys and, and gals and non-binary people, thanks for watching my podcast and my videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.